Targaryen who sits the Iron Throne is not just a king or a queen. I've wanted to be a dragon rider ever since I read Aragon in elementary school. Long story short, I never thought I would watch Game of Thrones. Back in 2019, when I went to visit my friend in New York for the BTS Speak Yourself tour, the season finale was airing that week that I was in New York, staying at her house. They were all getting ready to watch the last episode of Game of Thrones, which I had heard about at the time, but I had never watched it. I watched the last episode of Game of Thrones before I saw anything Game of Thrones related, and I didn't understand anything. Fast forward three years. My internet provider gives me HBO for free. I mean, it's included in the package. And every time I open the app, I see this show called House of the Dragon. And I'm like, oh, what is that? Oh, it's a prequel to Game of Thrones, that show that I swore I would never watch, hadn't watched at the time, and was not really interested in. I closed the app many times, never clicking on that show. But one day I was just like, oh, what the heck? Let me just watch it. And boy, was that the greatest decision I ever made. The way I was pulled into that world, it just got me hooked straight away. And and I loved House of the Dragon season one so much that after I watched it, I went and binge watched all eight seasons of Game of Thrones. That was two years ago. And now we got House of the Dragon season two. And this is the first time I'm actually waited a while between seasons because I've binged everything. I just remember being super excited for this season. Now it's finally here. And I'm just like, ooh, what's gonna happen? Okay, I kind of already know what's gonna happen because I spoiled myself, but I'm pretty sure most people already know what happens. This is a prequel. And it's also based off of the books. I have never read the book Fire and Blood or any of the Song of Ice and Fire books, but I know this whole House of the Dragon series, is, this whole story is about the fall of the House of Targaryen. It's leading up to like the Targaryen Civil War, which they call the Dance of the Dragons. And we already know what happens to most of these characters. Everyone's still super excited to see how we got there, right? And season one also ended at like a really peak time. At the time I'm filming this video, I've just watched episode episode one of season two of House of the Dragons, so I'm not gonna be able to spoil what I haven't seen. We all gotta get into the mood again. We gotta, we gotta bring ourselves back to Westeros. There was a lot of weird concepts when I first was introduced to this world, mostly the Targaryen family and their incest. Way back in the day, the Targaryens use blood magic to bond with dragons, and so that's why they have dragons. Their blood, I guess, the purer their blood, the stronger the bond? I don't know. Am I... Please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I feel like that's what I read somewhere, which is why I root for it, even though I'm just like, ew, incest. But it's like, no, we got to do it for the dragons. <laughs> <laughs> this whole story is just like the dramatic relationships between all these characters. And it all begins in that first episode that got me hooked with Viserys. He is the king. Rhaenyra is Viserys' daughter. His wife dies in childbirth and so does the son. He doesn't have a male heir, but he feels really bad about his wife's death. So he names Rhaenyra his heir. We learn from the very beginning that it is not, <laughs> it is not generally accepted for a woman to sit on the Iron Throne. And then Rhaenyra, she's like very young at this point. She doesn't want to be the heir. But then after she, after she's like named the heir, she doesn't want it to be taken away now that it's given to her. And she also has a very close friendship with another girl named Alison Hightower. She is the daughter of Otto Hightower, who is the king's hand. Basically, the guy that advises the king. And so, yeah, he's pretty powerful too. He was trying to get Alison to be closer to Viserys to kind of seduce him because now that his wife has died, he needs to marry someone, I guess. I guess he needs to. I mean, he didn't really have to. I always wondered why he ended up marrying Alison, but I guess he needed more kids. It was also a very weird concept as like someone new to this world. Rhaenyra, it's so weird that your dad just married married your best friend in that world, it was seen as very normal. So is the fact that she has had a crush on her uncle Damon and then there, there was a lot of tension there. I don't know. It never actually bothered me because I was just like, oh yes, Damon. I was rooting for them. Like it just, all of these relationships, like if you really think about it, if you put it in the context of present day, it's very uncomfortable to think about. But when you watch the show, you're like, ooh. I was also kind of rooting for them because I feel like if they were together, it would strengthen Rhaenyra's side because Alicent, after after she marries Viserys, she gives him like sons. Everyone else in the realm would probably be like, yeah, now that Alicent and Viserys had a son, the son should probably be the heir and not Rhaenyra. But then 
the series. He never denounced Rhaenyra as Aaron. And the situation with Rhaenyra is also that before she married Damon and got together with Damon, she married Laenor Valerion. So House Valerion is another house that's very powerful. And they kind of control the seas. They have a powerful navy. She marries Laenor, who is the son of Corlys Valerion, the king of Driftmark. He is married to Rhaenys Targaryen, who was the queen that never was. Laenor is not. Um, he does not like women. He likes men. So he already has like a lover. So Rhaenyra has three kids with Harwin Strong. So they're like bastard kids. Everyone kind of knows that they're bastard kids. They're not really Laenor and her kids. She did a lot of things that made her look kind of bad. She slept with freaking Sir Kristen Cole, the knight. That was also a messy situation that at first I was like, oh, I like Kristen. He seems like a good guy until he took it too seriously. And he was just like, oh my God, Rhaenyra, you're the one who made me break my oath of chastity. And now you, you're refusing to run away with me. And he's still very salty, as we know now in season two. He is now on Team Green. He's like with Allison. Team Black and Team Green. This is the main thing I want to talk about in this video, actually. It took me a long time to get here, didn't it? I am curious to see if anyone's on Team Green. The majority of people do seem to be on Team Black. I was always kind of on Rhaenyra's side ever since the beginning. I feel like she didn't really do anything that made me dislike her in any way. It just felt like everyone around her was taking things away from her that belonged to her. I don't know if it actually belongs to her though. I mean, but she was named heir. So I'm just like, why is everyone just not accepting this? But I guess that was society back then. And the fact that she was kind of sleeping around and having bastard kids didn't make her look good. If she was just a guy, no one would have blinked an eye. Maybe it's the modern mindset that makes us stand by Rhaenyra. I did also dislike Alicent for a long time. She was kind of forced into it by her dad. And then he also convinced her that Rhaenyra would be out to get her kids. There was no way for that friendship to continue. But at the same time, she does still have feelings for Rhaenyra. Like she doesn't want to be complete enemies. We kind of understand her because we sort of followed her from when she was young and how she was always like Miss Goody Two Shoes. And then Rhaenyra was always breaking the rules and got away with it. And Allison was very jealous. I feel like she was just very jealous. But then now she's just doing whatever. She's like sleeping with Kristen. She's got that dude who has a foot fetish on her side. But dang, the end of season one when Aemon riding Vagar accidentally kills Lucerys, Rhaenyra's younger son. That basically started this whole war. The start of season two is actually right after the events of the last episode of season one. Right now it feels like Team Black kind of has the upper hand because they have 13 dragons and Team Green only has four dragons. But Team Green has Vagar, the largest dragon. So it kind of tips the scale a bit there. I mean, we all know what happens at the end. I don't know the exact events. I just know that everything crashes and burns at the end. Okay, everyone kind of dies. Okay, there's no real winner at the end of this Dance of the Dragons. We all know even from Game of Thrones, Joffrey even talked about how Rhaenyra met her demise. It's kind of strange that it's so intense, even though I already know the results. But I guess that's what happens when you watch prequels. Prequels are interesting. They're they're really strange because it's like you already know what happens. We're just showing you what hap how we got there. You guys can let me know if you guys are on Team Green or Team Black or how you feel about the two, the two sides. I'm excited to watch the rest of the season as it comes out. House of the Dragon is actually the only show that I chase week by week. Usually I don't watch a show until all the episodes are out, but I'm making an exception for House of the Dragon. I